So yeah, I researched further into the, the zamello frankel set theory, and it seems there are different axioms that are the foundational truths for mathematics. Axioms are sentences that are not further proven and taken to be true. And most of the axioms make sense, but then the important part is also that there is the so-called axiom of choice, um, which is a bit hard to understand. As I understand it, it just means that you can choose from yeah, different sets. So everything can, every object in mathematics can be expressed in set theory. And then it seems to have one presupposition that you can build another set from all non-empty sets. And that means that you just pick an element out of all of these sets and put them into your new set. Um, and that's pretty intuitive. But it turns out this is another axiom that has to be assumed and it cannot be derived from the other axioms that zermelo frankel set theory has come up with. Now, the problem seems to be that if you say, okay, we accept the axiom of choice, we can do a lot of things, but it will lead to certain paradoxes. So, for example, one paradox where I don't really know why seems to be the so-called, let me just um, bring that here, the Barnack Tosky paradox. That's the one that I most understood uh, where I said, okay, that makes sense if that really follows. Is that something we want? And according to that one, we can take apart a three-dimensional um, object, solid unit ball into many infinite pieces. And then we just do that by using rotations or something. And then we can actually build from them two unit balls or I guess infinite balls, right? And uh, that seems to be counterintuitive and therefore not something that we want. Uh, nevertheless, when we go back to uh, Badieu, it says here that uh, that he specifically uses the axiom of choice. What that means for his theory, I cannot say right now. We have to figure that out later. So in short, the event is a truth caused by a hidden part or set appearing within existence. This part escapes language and known existence and thus being itself lacks the terms and resources to fully process the event. Yeah. So the new theory that we maybe come up with is always superseding the current language we have. And yeah, we have to see how that is supposed to be related to set theory. I wish they could be a little bit more specific here at that passage because still it does not tell me a lot about Badiou's theory. So Badiou's theory is based on a major paradox. That's the idea that we are presented with a lot of multiple perspectives, phenomena, and that at the same time we assume that the whole universe is a kind of superstructure of oneness. And he believes that the Greek thought has never really dealt with that problem. And his counter theory seems to be that the one is not. Learn ne pas. Learn ne pas. Um, and it says here that only set theory allows one to conceive a pure doctrine of the multiple. So only within set theory, it seems, we can really understand why there are multiple things that are generated out of oneness. I guess it's like related to the Tarski paradox now that I'm thinking about, but this is just speculation at this point. We have to dive in deeper to Badiou in really to figure that out. out. So uh, let's, let's read a bit further uh, Wikipedia here. So set theory does not operate in terms of definite individual element and groupings, but only functions insofar as what belongs to a set is of the same relation as that set that is another set too. Yeah, so there's a function of a set by which the elements of the set are probably defined. And this may be an internal definition. So because now he talks about what individuates a set, therefore is not an existential positive proposition, but other multiples whose properties validate its presentation. So yeah, I don't have a background in set theory. Maybe, I mean, I have heard a little bit about it, 
but maybe you can explain to me what that means, right? Um, I guess we have to dive deeper into Badiou to really understand that. Um, it seems, however, that the individuation of a set, so if we make a set, it is made by multiples and these multiples have properties, structural relations, and they make the presentation. So there's an ontological idea behind that there's really something about the multiples that make the presentation. So maybe one can be presented as many or is the many real? I mean, I guess he goes into the, the direction that the many is real and the one is not, as he has said. So the structure of being thus secures the regime of the count as one. So if one is to think of a set, for instance, the set of people, okay, we have an example, the set of people or humanity as counting as one, the multiple elements which belong to the set are secured as one consistent concept, humanity but only in terms of what does not belong to that set. Okay, so there is nothing positive existential within the set, but somehow it's defined by what does not belong to the set. So the positivity of the set is established by something from the outside or by virtue of an opposition to what it is not reminds me of Spinoza and Brandon who say what counts as something is what it is not. Omnis determinatio est negatio, right? All determination is negation. Hmm. Uh, let's go a little bit further. What is crucial for Badieu is the structural form of the count as one, which makes multiplicities thinkable. Okay, so that the proper name of being does not belong to an element as such, an original one, but rather the void set, the set to which nothing belongs, not even the void itself. So yeah, I guess like the definition of what is, is not within the set, but somehow defined by the outside of the set. So this is what we seem to say here, and this is what we have to take into consideration so far. Uh, well, okay, where's the problem here? I don't see how I can dive deeper into this without further background knowledge, to be honest. So yeah, thinking about this, I think it's a post-structuralist effect, right? That which actually defines the term cannot be part of the terms themselves. It must be outside. This is what he's saying here. There's an outside function that will always exist. And so even when we group humans in different groups, well, according to what do we group them? I think the idea is that we group it to according to something that is outside. And so this is also where this goes on. So the proper name of being does not belong to an element as such, but rather to the void set, the set to which nothing belongs. So being is the idea of the superstructure that orders everything. But that which orders everything has to be then outside of being, which cannot be, so it's nothing. So being is rather the empty set. That is how he phrases it here. And if we look further, like, so we, we try to comprehend that by the idea of terminology. And uh, here it says terminology implies precisely a difference between terms as the condition for meaning. Uh, the idea of a term without meaning is incoherent. So, if I have terms, I already imply that there is something outside that defines these terms. Actually, that was said before, I just uh, jumped ahead. For there to be a term without there also being a system of terminology within which the difference between terms gives context and meaning to one term is impossible. So we cannot just have terms without having an overarching system of these terms. And this overarching system seems not to be part of the terms of themselves. I, I hope that makes sense. So as I understand, it's something like an outside function. But then what is the absolute outside? Well, it cannot be expressed. It's either we say it's mystical 
or if it can be expressed, it must somehow come from the within, which is again absurd. So, the, and then let's go on. Like, I mean, we have a lot of paradoxes here. I hope you can still f follow. So the count is one is a structural effect or s situational operation. It is not an event of truth. So, okay, we have the oneness, but that is not something that is true. It is rather just something that we do. Multiples which are composed or consistent are count effects. Inconsistent multiplicity is the presentation of presentation. Whew. I don't know what this means, but I'm sorry. We finish here, but I think the last paragraph is really important. So, but your use of set theory in this manner is not just illustrative or heuristic. So he uses the axioms of Samuel Le Frankel or set theory to identify the relationship of being to history, nature, the state and God. So how does that go on, you wonder, right? But now we get even more bigger terms. But, but let's wait a second. There's a very interesting passage that comes. Most significantly, this use means that there is a strict prohibition on self-belonging. A set cannot contain or belong to itself. So we know this is the famous Russell paradox, right? This results from the axiom of foundation or the axiom of regularity which enacts such a prohibition. So we just say, no, that does not work or our sets will be inconsistent. This axiom states that every non-empty set A contains an element Y that is disjoint from A. So every set has an element that does not belong to the set. So it cannot belong only to itself. But Dio's philosophy draws two major implications from this prohibition. Firstly, it secures the inexistence of the one. So if we use this mathematical theory of axioms, then there can be no one. There cannot be a grand superstructure and overarching set, and thus it is fallacious to conceive of a grand cosmos, a whole nature or a being of God. So he is actually against uh, Georg Kanter here, who was not an atheist, I believe. However, secondly, this prohibition prompts him to introduce the event, because according to Badieu, the axiom of foundation founds all sets in the void. It ties all beings to the historical social situation of the multiplicities of decentered sets, thereby effacing the positivity of subjective action or an entirely new occurrence. So I don't know why the new comes up now, just to make intuitively sense of that, so I don't define all of my actions because there's always something that is defined from the outside that is not included in the set of operations that I use in order to describe this world. And right now I have to describe it as nothing. But at some point I pull it in. It's an event where my set becomes larger because I assume I invent a new language. Um, yeah, th thereby facing the, yeah, and it's a subjective action, right? And whilst this is acceptable ontologically, it is unacceptable philosophically. Set theory mathematics has consequently pragmatically abandoned an area which philosophically cannot. And so, but you argues, there's therefore only one possible remaining that ontology can say nothing about the event. I think like recent ontology cannot say anything about the event. Okay, I don't want to go on here because it's a lot to take in and I don't claim that I have understood everything so far. I wonder like, okay, why is it uh, philosophically not acceptable but ontologically acceptable? Um, so... Mathematics seems to reject that, but philosophy does not. And maybe he wants to repair that. I don't know. If you have understood these parts, please let me know in the comments. Start a discussion. Explain to me what it is so that I, and maybe also you, can enlarge our horizon on that aspect. Uh, thank you very much for buying. Like, share, and subscribe. Look at my website. You know the whole spiel. Thank you very much for watching.